All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. And in today's video, I thought I would talk to you guys about my 2020 fig season so far. Um, how are we doing with the figs? And I gave you guys an update really not too long ago, but we're finally getting a bit warmer here. And I like to have these updates every single year. I like to be able to compare with my YouTube channel, go back to prior years and see where were we at at that point of the season in 2019, 2018, 2017. Um, and it's been a nice little way of going back and sort of using that information to adjust my techniques, my expectations uh, for what I'm doing in the current year. And I, I do strongly suggest that you guys do something similar. Um, at the very least, you can compare where you're at, at least right now, to what I have currently going on here in my particular yard. So I would say overall, because today is May 20th, um, I would say at May 20th, we're behind. With the potted trees, particularly, uh, with potentially maybe some of the, uh, the in-ground trees that are not under low tunnels, and then especially the trees that were in pots they came out of the greenhouse. Um, what is doing fantastic is actually the trees underneath the low tunnels. They've sort of saved the whole thing, I think, for me because of how bad the greenhouse production is this year with some of these trees. Some of them really don't look good. Um, and the reason for that we've talked about in prior videos is that we had too much heat in the greenhouse too soon. And as a result, a lot of the trees didn't grow all that much. They bolted too quickly and they set fruit early. And that sort of limited the number, the amount of shoot growth that they had. Uh, rather than growing quite a bit and then setting the fruits, we had very little growth and then they set the fruits. And therefore our production's lower. The amount of photosynthesis each tree has is lower. Um, overall, they're really just not happy and, and I'm, sh I'm really struggling here to get these trees to resume growing because taking them out of the greenhouse it's been very cold here and that's sort of why we're about a week behind I would say normal year uh, because we've had if you do a quick recap here we had a very mild winter a warm start to our spring uh, sometime around the end of March and the beginning of April Shortly after that, in the beginning of April, sometime around there, we started to have very cold temperatures. And uh, they sustained themselves for all of April into early May, even into the middle of May, uh, where we had a couple frosts that came in here. Um, so it's kind of crazy that these frosts happened and the, the colder temperatures have happened. And it's a shame because this is really what, really why we're so behind this year is that if we had flip-flopped the temperatures instead we had a cold early may but we had a warm i'm sorry if we had a cold early april and then we had a warm early may it would have been a totally different story where these trees would have been probably just on par with where they're at in a normal year but because we did that little flip-flop and how things have been colder recently in may that's really affected these trees more and as a result i can come around here and i'm going to do some thinning today there is some thinning left to do on some branches that don't look like they're probably going to fruit for me um, didn't grow the 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 size and the vigor that i wanted we're also going to do some pinching today we did already a couple of these trees that came out of the greenhouse and i just pinched the first tree today that received no head start that was in a pot um, we're going to evaluate some of the in-ground trees and look at some of these and maybe do some thinning because actually the, the in-ground trees underneath these low tunnels look fantastic. Uh, they just probably need a little bit of thinning, although I'm debating whether or not I should let them really just grow for this year and have as many shoots as possible to put out as much growth and roots as possible and not necessarily worry about the fruits this year. Um, yeah, there's a big debate. So, you know, the point is, is that we're, we're a week behind. Uh, the greenhouse trees really gave me a scare because I'm going to show you guys some of them right now, 
However, those in-ground trees in the low tunnels, I'm really thankful that I got all that going, got that whole process started. We did get the cover on when we did, and they're just leagues ahead of some of these trees. So here's like a, a number of trees that are adjusting to full sun now that came out of the greenhouse. We just moved them out. And uh, this is their second location before I put them into full sun. And you can see just like how little shoot growth there is on some of these, some of these new branches. Um, this one looks pretty decent because it's the higher point of the tree. But ideally we should have a number of leaves, six to seven to eight leaves before we start seeing a lot of fruit on these greenhouse trees. So, you know, this is a pretty good example of a black Madeira that has just a ton of fruit in a very small space and it's just not gonna do much this year um yeah it'll, this these trees like the italian 258 will they're gonna resume growth here pretty soon but the growth on these trees are not it's not gonna be very vigorous it's gonna be slower growing and uh the the fruits on that new growth probably are not going to ripen in a reasonable amount of time just because these varieties that came out of the greenhouse most of them are late most of them are late to ripen so if i'm not getting the the fruit set that i want now um, they're going to end up ripening probably in october maybe september if i'm lucky on that new growth uh, once these trees resume their growth and that's just too late in the season for me um, to really be able to appreciate those fruits. You can see our younger trees here that are of our experimental varieties. They've really started to green up now and really started to leaf out across the board. Uh, they were a bit slow to get going just because of the temperatures. We have some grafts that we did, some younger varieties. A couple of these, we, we rejuvenated pruned a lot of these actually. And a couple of them after the rejuvenation prune have really taken their, their time uh, leafing back out and may not leaf out at all. We may have cut them back too much and uh, as a result we may have lost maybe about two or three trees. So that's a little unfortunate but not the end of the world. I mean most of these trees I have copies of and uh, it is what it is. There is a tree here I want to show you guys specifically. A couple of these they are just very strange. Uh, we have my De La Roca here. We took air layers off and then we actually rejuvenation pruned this to about this height because this growth all the way down is rather healthy. Um, but it's just now forming uh, new shoots. It's been in the greenhouse awake. It hasn't been awake. In the entire time it was in the greenhouse, it did not wake up. Whereas if you look at the tree right next to it, this is one of my finer specimens in the greenhouse. My Col de Nom Noir has a lot of fruit on it. It's got a really nice head start and they share the same pot. Yet the one on the left, the De La Roca, has done nothing so far. It's just now leafing out, which is at this point, if a tree is just now leafing out, it's really quite late. And that's really a testament to our colder temperatures. We also have here a Col de Nom Blanc that uh, is pretty much defoliating itself. And there's a reason for this. Uh, this might be a nice lesson for some of you guys out there. This particular tree is quite diseased with the uh, fig mosaic virus. And it does this every year where it does defoliate a little bit. It seems like every year. And uh, it has a pretty good fruit set on it for the amount of shoot growth, very surprisingly. One of the first trees to wake up, but I don't think it really likes these colder temperatures out here. Um, so in the spring, when it's, you have these colder nights, this tree really doesn't appreciate it. On top of that, if you let the pot and the soil dry out a bit and then water it in really well, it doesn't like that either. I think this was a direct, and I've thought in the past, maybe it was because I fed it too much, but the, really the change, the drastic change in soil moisture has made this tree defoliate and the leaves now are turning yellow and then falling off. And um, that's something I've noticed now for two years with this variety. So what this tree needs and why these three trees are here 
actually four of them. Um, we're actually going to put them in the ground very soon. So I'm going to take them out of their pots. When these low tunnels come down, these are going to go in. Uh, I'm not going to rejuvenate prune this this season, but I'm, I'm strongly considering rejuvenation pruning the entire Col de Nom Blanc. Even though there's a bunch of fruits on here that are going to be nice, very tasty, I don't want to miss out on these. But I'm debating whether or not I should just rejuvenation prune this now, get it to us get it established in the ground with a nice bunch of healthy new shoots, and then next year we'll get a ton of fruit off of it. You know, it's kind of a trade off. Should I wait? Because inevitably I'm going to have rejuvenation prune all of this. There's a Col de Nom Blanc here. I think that's what this is. No, this is a Col de Nom Roja. We have a Roja, a Col de Nom Noir, a De La Roca, and a Col de Nom Blanc that we're all putting in the ground underneath these low tunnels. And we're going to rejuvenation prune them all at some point this fall. But I'm sort of debating, you know, because of the fruit set on some of these, I rather, I think I'd rather just wait until the fall rather than do this in the spring right now. But the Col de Nom Blanc really needs it. And I'm debating, you know, maybe it is a good idea to do that. Um, some of the trees also that came out of the greenhouse have some sunburn, which is really compounding the effect of the punishment that some of these trees are getting. And, they really need some leaves on them to get any sort of energy towards these fruits. So I'm hoping that they do resume some growth and at least use that energy uh, from the leaves to then focus on the current existing fruits rather than putting out more fruits because those fruits that will form on that new growth really will just not ripen in time. And it, like I said, it's, it's kind of just a waste at that point. Uh, we do have underneath this particular um, structure here is just a ton of really nicely rooted plants that are leafing out really well. We have some under here that are showing uh, an incredible amount of growth. A lot of them have figs on them. They're loving life. These guys are doing fantastic. Up here is an area where we have some trees that just came out of the grow closet and they're adjusting to full sun. These also look really good. Uh, so in a sense, we've done a pretty darn good job in terms of getting our younger plants off to a good start. I like the younger plants, even the ones that we showed you guys in those five gallons, how we rejuvenation pruned them, etc. Those are looking quite good. So we're, we are setting ourselves up well for next year. Um, however, you know, the fruit set this year is not going to be nearly as early or as abundant. And if I bring you guys over <clears throat> to some of these trees, under the low tunnels, they're looking fantastic. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that in there. That's a Nero 600M. It's gonna have fruit on it very soon. We showed you guys the uh, Noir de Barbantane as well recently. And then we also have, I didn't even get really a chance to go in here and show you guys any of this, but it's not just over there. It's a lot of these varieties in here. We have the Blanche de Du Cezanne, the uh, Black Madeira is leafing out really well. We have, what else do we have back there? Fico Love and Black Beauty 10 on this side over here. We have a number of varieties that are also doing pretty decently. Um, so overall, it's been really quite something. Um, I didn't even get a chance, I haven't even looked at the Neruciolo de Elba right here. I can't even see it because it's being hidden by this bee bomb plant. I need to cut that back, I think. But overall, guys, uh, the in-ground trees, as I said, are really taking off and making this year a lot better uh, than it would have otherwise been. So I'm really happy about that. Maybe there's too many trees. It's too much for me to handle. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, we even have some trees that are unprotected, un not under low tunnels, in warm locations, and uh, 
this is Sultane here. It's got a nice amount of growth on it, on this particular shoot. And same thing with that Texas BA1 over here. You know, this is looking really good, almost as good as the uh, some of the potted trees. So what I'm sort of thinking here, and this is my little estimation of what should happen sort of like in the future, with a lot of these trees here, guys, is that I think it's a pretty good expectation that some of the potted trees that receive no head start should ripen by about August 1st. Those are the earliest ones, uh, like the Calderwood Unknown that I have over there that looks really, really good. Uh, that's an, This is in a normal year. So if we assume August 1st in a normal year, I would say that the in-ground trees in very warm locations, not under low tunnels, will ripen about two weeks after that, so about August 15th. The low tunnel trees should ripen actually two weeks before August 1st, before the potted trees, um, and they're going to start, so that would put them at uh, July 15th. And then we have the greenhouse trees here, which come out of the greenhouse, and some of these ripen by July 1st. So um, there is an expectation at least by July 15th for these. And I don't see any reason why we can't have the same results with the trees underneath the low tunnels. So that's where my focus is gonna go to is of course the trees underneath the low tunnels. Because if they're ahead of the potted trees, then um, the potted trees are becoming somewhat obsolete, a lot of work. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little update uh, I want to make a couple announcements. We have our podcast now, Fruit Talk, on all, almost all the major platforms. We have it on Spotify, Google Podcasts. Um, go check it out there. It's really uh, cool to be able to have them all in one place or an application called Anchor that was able to then distribute the podcast to all these different platforms. Also, uh, our website's looking beautiful. We're about to publish it on Google in different search engines um, so that way we can have some SEO and different traffic being directed there that's really where I want the traffic to go from now on is towards our website you have our blog there you have our videos there you have our podcast there and you even have our consulting services and different things over there all the information I'm trying to put over there and it looks it looks so good it looks real sharp I'm excited for it so thank you guys here for watching this one We'll see everybody soon, all right? Stay safe out there, guys.